Welcome to ZDNet's DIY IT Project Lab, where I'm testing resin 3D printers for your entertainment and edification. Today we'll be looking at the AnyCubic family of washing and curing stations. Let's put this project into context. Resin printers are different from filament printers. Filament printers extrude filament through a hot end, melting the filament to form layers. Resin printers create layers by exposing a chemical compound which hardens where light hits the resin. I've subjected each candidate machine to a series of performance and quality tests. Beyond that, I look at setup, the user experience, and even how the finished prints look under the microscope. My name is David Gewertz, and you're watching ZDNet's 3D Printing Discovery Series, which is part of my DIY IT column. In addition to exploring 3D printers, we also explore maker and smart home technology, stress test servers, fly drones, and regularly dive deep into advanced geekery for fun and profit. Resin 3D printing, known as SLA or stereolithography, is a substantially messier process than the fused deposition modeling process that fuses layers of filament on top of each other. The resin itself is toxic, as are often the cleaning chemicals. Worse, IPA, isopropyl alcohol, has been in relatively short supply due to the pandemic. When I last looked at the logistics of resin cleanup, we were still using ultrasonic cleaners, definitely not advisable with the flammable IPA, and pickle jars to clean the finished parts. Since then, two innovations have made the process no less messy or toxic, but definitely less difficult water-soluble resins, and washing and curing stations. Water-soluble resins like this Elegoo almost completely eliminate the problem associated with sourcing, handling, smelling, and breathing in IPA. There is still an issue when it comes to disposal of the dirty water, but that's a discussion for a different day. The curing stations eliminate a lot of the hassle involved in cleaning prints. They provide both a washing action and a UV light source for curing prints after they've been washed. Before we get started on today's two test devices, I'd like to remind you that this video is part of a comprehensive 3D printing and desktop fabrication discovery series. If you'd like to know when the next review is up, feel free to cl click the subscribe button and the little notify bell that's down there somewhere. Let's not bury the lead. These are not particularly expensive devices and have become, in my mind, essential accessories if you use a resin 3D printer. They transform resin 3D printing from a thoroughly annoying and noxious process to one that's actually reasonably tolerable. AnyCubic sent me these two devices. Packaging for both was solid. They arrived in good condition. I've been testing the original Wash & Cure for a few months now and have been very happy with it. It's designed to work with the smaller resin printers like the Elegoo Mars and the AnyCubic Photon that have become really popular over the last few years. The Wash & Cure Plus came in just a few weeks ago. It's the big brother to the Wash & Cure, designed to work with the larger printers like the Elegoo Saturn and the AnyCubic Mono X. These printers have build volumes almost twice as large as their smaller counterparts, and the larger Wash & Cure is designed to support that larger capacity. The workflow is pretty straightforward and nearly identical for both machines. Once an object has completed printing, it needs to be removed from the build tray. At this point, it's full of resin, so be sure you're fully PPE'd up. I like to remove supports before washing because I want all the places where the supports used to be also cleaned of resin. I wear a full face pair of goggles and a lab coat for this process. The goggles are because the supports tend to fire off like little arrows and I don't want them going into my eyes. I wear the lab coat to keep resin off my regular clothes. It's just an easy option. Once the supports are removed, the model goes into the wash and cure. Each wash and cure model has the ability to hold the build plate, but I found I preferred putting the model itself into the basket. With the wash tank in place, I select wash and set it to run for six minutes. On the smaller device, the agitator changes direction halfway through the run. On the larger device, the agitator seems to change direction every two minutes or so. In both cases, the models get very thorough cleaning. Once clean, I take the model out of the bucket and dry it off as best I can. I also remove the bucket from the wash and cure. There are times I've been too impatient to get it fully dry before curing, and that leaves these little white spots on the model. In addition to the larger capacity, the wash and cure plus adds four relatively minor features that, while not game changers, are welcome additions. 
The first added feature is a rack that allows the wash basket to drain over the water tank. Dry prints cure far better than wet or damp ones, and this is a quick and easy way to get those prints dry. Now that the model is dry, I'll put the round curing table onto the wash and cure. I place the model on the table, put the lid back on, and set the curing time for six minutes. The Salkin Welcome Edition of the Wash and Cure Plus over the original is a little mirror that fits under the rotating platform and helps project the UV light under the prints as well as around the back and top. Previously, you had to flip the object over and cure it a second time to be sure you reach the bottom. The mirror is made of a flexible material and I'm, I'm not really sure how long it's going to survive. It would be nice to see any Cubic offer replacements as consumables that can be purchased when needed. AnyCubic does offer a $22 replacement tank for the original wash and cure. This is great, not just because the tanks can become clogged over time, but because it would be nice to have a tank filled with IPA and another filled with water to accommodate cleaning the different types of resin you might be encountering. The third added feature of the Wash and Cure Plus over the original Wash and Cure are the little dots on the rotating table. These dots hold the print up a bit, allowing resin to drain. Finally, the fourth added feature is this. The Wash and Cure UV bar tilts down at the top, helping UV to shine more effectively on the top of prints, and it's cool. Pricing and availability for this class of machine tends to vary. The post-processing stations have a tendency to show up on Amazon and the vendor sites, sell out, and then become available again later. Pricing appears to range from about 129 US to about 250 US, depending on when and where you're buying the devices. As I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, having a washing and curing station can be a game changer for resin 3D printing. Resin printing will never be entirely mess free, but the Anycubic wash and cure stations make the process of resin 3D printing easier, cleaner, and far less annoying. I'd go so far to say that if you're going to get a resin 3D printer, you should go ahead and get a washing and curing station with it. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. If you like this video or the idea of turning toxic, slimy resin into amazing 3D objects makes you feel all gooey inside, go ahead and mash the like button. I'm David Gewurz for ZDNet's DIYIT. Go out there and make something cool.